All right, so here we are with another exciting tutorial of our JP Tech Talk stuff. Today we're going to work on panorama photography. It didn't work at all. This is a good thing we're live streaming because now you can all see me make my mistakes here. So I am trying to use this new software. Perfect. So here we are. The intro played. I'm Donovan Wright with Jasper Place High School uh, doing another tech talk on panorama photography. So panorama photography, uh, lots of fun. I enjoy doing it uh, a lot. Whenever I go on holidays, I'm always constantly taking panorama, uh, panorama photos and driving my wife and kids nuts, uh, taking so much time to do them. They can be a huge, huge, huge blast. Uh, to do, but they take a little bit of skill, and uh, and over the years I've gotten better at them. Uh, the main thing about panorama photos, though, is taking them is only half of the battle. So uh, we've talked in class briefly about uh, taking different kinds of panorama photos. You can do them on your smartphones. Uh, super easy to do. The one big thing you want to understand is panorama photos in a horizontal orientation are going to get you long, skinny photos. Yes, you get long skinny photos doing it in a vertical orientation, but if you take all of your photos vertically, it makes it much better. You need to make sure that you overlap about 20% on each photo as you're taking those photos. Uh, and then when you bring it into Photoshop, uh, it's gonna be super easy. So we're gonna do a two-step process. Uh, part A is in Adobe Bridge, pump it into Photoshop, and then we're gonna be able to put that all together. So let's jump right into our tutorial here. So here we are in Adobe Bridge. Uh, I've already found a folder with all my photos and stuff. So I did a tutorial a little while ago about uh, copying your photos off and printing them and all this kind of stuff. Uh, generally, I'm assuming that you already know how to get your photos into Adobe Bridge. Um, here you can see that this is actually an HDR panorama. Uh, I've taken each one of the stages of the photo uh, as both uh, a high, medium, and low, and I'll do. I've done other tutorials in the past about HDR, and uh, so briefly, I'm not really going to describe how I do this uh, HDR process. But what we are going to do is find out that we have three photos that we need to deal with, and we're not going to do an HDR panorama all in one step. The the way to do it the best, the way it works the best that I've found, is to physically take these three images put them into uh, Photoshop as an HDR Pro, merge them into an HDR document, and then do the same process for the next three photos in the sequence, the next three photos in the sequence, so on and so forth. For today, just for speed, we're just gonna use the first image from each of these uh, bracketed exposures. The first image is generally the middle, so the camera takes one photo that's in the middle, and then it takes a photo that's underexposed, and then a photo that's overexposed, depending on how you've set your bracketed uh, settings in your camera. So we're just going to take the first photo from each of these and use them as our images to get our panorama started here. Now, uh, if you don't know how to, to do a, a selection like this, I'm just holding the control key on the keyboard uh, and it is going through here allowing me to select just the images that I want. So every third image basically is the uh, properly exposed or middle exposure photo of the batch here. So you can see how it's got, uh, you've already kind of can see the panorama starting to form just in the selection uh, window here showing you the preview of all those different pictures and from here. It's it's actually quite easy uh, right in uh, Adobe uh, bridge. There is a tool here under the tools panel go to Photoshop and you want to do a photo merge and once I select photo merge It's going to automatically open up Photoshop now it might take a second on your computer. I've got my um, I happen to have my computer already open uh, and the window was already open for my computer so uh, it might take a brief second for yours to load. Uh, while mine loads up the pictures here, 
Uh, I'll go back to that screen so you can kind of see what's going on. There's one thing you have to do before it really gets chugging here, but just know that depending on the, the speed of your computer, that transition from Adobe Bridge to Photoshop, I already had mine open. It might be faster or slower depending on your machine. So in Adobe Photoshop here, this window or this pop-up box will appear and it's going to ask you some questions about your, your photos. Uh, if you've taken your photos smoothly and in a, um, either using a tripod or you just held really still and kept them all vertical and straight, uh, you can probably just use the auto setting. If you know for sure that there's some weird uh, aberrations, you can use these other setups and Photoshop will tweak your photos accordingly. Uh, it seems to always do a good job with auto for me, so it must just be the way that I take photos, but I'm going to leave it on auto and just hit OK. It's listed those file names that we're importing in here, so when I select OK, now it's going to go through and it's going to open up each one of those into a new layer into Photoshop, and it's going to analyze that photo for us so that we can see just exactly what's going on. Now, uh, again, it's bringing those photos into layers here. And you can see it working away in the bottom corner. And, uh, and it is fairly labor intensive for the computer to do this. It has to analyze all the pixels and the, and the portions of the, the photo that you've given it uh, in order to stitch it all together into one seamless photo. Obviously, the better job you do taking the photos, the better job it's going to be able to do at putting them together for you and uh, creating the very best panorama that you possibly can have. So uh, hopefully it doesn't take super, super long time. Uh, I got a fairly quick computer here, so it looks like it's already gone and analyzed those photos. Uh, you can uh, see here, I have a little progress bar. It shows up on my other screen. I can't bring it over for you uh, right now, but it says that it is blending the selected layers based on contact or content, excuse me. And uh, it's just working away here and right away we'll start to see those po photos popping up on the screen. So should be uh, momentarily here. Here we go. So as you can see, it has created a nice seamless panorama for us. We get this beautiful mountain vista. This was a pond uh, in Kananaskis country that I had gone to. To uh, We just went for a little walk around it. You can do fishing here and stuff. But it was a beautiful still day, and I loved this reflection in the water. So you can notice how because I took it just freehand, there is a slight drop-off in the sky uh, at the top here, as well as on the bottom, you can see that I drifted just a little bit and didn't keep the horizon perfectly straight in my camera. Now this can be super easily corrected. I could rasterize some of these layers and actually Photoshop is smart enough, it could build in some more sky for me. But in this case, I'm totally okay with just losing a little bit of the photo because it's already quite big as it is. So. I'm just going to use the crop tool. Uh, it was preset to a different ratio. I just want to get rid of this ratio. So I'm going to hit clear. And I can bring it now across. And just make sure that whatever you do crop wise, you want to make sure that you've cropped off enough that you end up with a full picture and not a corner missing here and there. If you notice, this is still. Uh, kind of chopped off so I'm just going to come down just a titch more to get it in there. Now this is a case where I might actually just for some extra space if I crop it where the picture ends I'm a little tight to those mountains but if I come up just a pinch uh, we'll leave this and I'll show you this the uh, content aware fill that Photoshop can do to bring back in that sky and to fix those issues. In the bottom here it's kind of dark I'm not as concerned about the the sky or the I guess this shadowy lake pond business being cut off so we're gonna keep this as it is I'm gonna I know there's a part we're gonna have to fix after but at least we're good to go so all I have to do is hit enter on the keyboard or you can check this checkbox at the top here that says that I'm done cropping and uh, thank you computer fix it for me so if you can see here it's cropped off these three sides quite beautifully uh, we have a nice scenic vista but there's a little bit of sky missing up here at the top so the first step uh, I have all my layers already selected because I haven't deselected them 
yeah, in my layers panel. And I simply just have to right click on them. We're going to convert to smart object. And what this is going to do is it's going to squish all my layers down into one uh, editable layer uh, for the future. Now, I want to keep this and I don't want to, I want to be non destructive here. I don't want to wreck my originals. So I'm actually going to duplicate this. I'm going to simply drag it to the new, over top of the new layer button. And when I let go, it's going to give me a copy of this layer. I will turn off the original layer. And I'm now going to right click and rasterize this layer, which will make it a flat layer. Uh, in order to use Content Aware Fill in Photoshop, you have to have a rasterized layer. It can't Content Aware on top of um, on top of merged layers and uh, and referenced layers. Um, it just doesn't work very well. So now the next step is to create a selection. So I'm going to use my straight rectangular marquee tool, bring it across the top. I'm going to include just the tip of these trees here in my selection and now all I have to do is simply do a right click fill and I am going to fill based on content aware there's a whole bunch of different options here content aware though happens to be kind of the magic option that when I select OK it's going to now look at my photo and it's going to look around in the photo and take varying degrees of color to actually fill in this little box that I've created with an image that looks completely natural and uh, and quite realistic. Now, obviously, it's just kind of duplicated some of the stuff that's close by to it. But I mean, at first glance, all you'd think is that this tree is just slightly higher, and that I did a great job of getting that sky to fill in there. So a really quick, easy way to square off your photo. Everything's looking good now. The only thing that is not is that it's not saved. So you're going to want to do a file save as and I would do this in two different ways go to your F drive uh, I'm in the Comtech uh, folder here uh, which one do I want to save it in let's save it in the, the just straight Comtech here so uh, right now it's untitled panorama well that doesn't do me any good uh, that's not a very good name for it so we'll call this um, uh, we'll call this can panel 2017 because that was the year that it was taken uh, and I'm going to save it first as a Photoshop document so that it saves as a PSD you can see the percentage chugging away here they're big photos it takes a little while for your computer to save it and then I am going to once this is finished save it again as a JPEG so I have both the original and I have a flat version so that I can work with the flat version for my portfolio a little easier instead of referencing this very 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 large file so again we'll do a file save as bring it in here select JPEG and can panel 2017 is a great name to leave it as hit save in the JPEG when you're saving a JPEG it asks you file size I always go with the maximum uh, that we possibly can and the default stuff I always leave just the regular uh, just make sure sometimes by default it brings this quality down you want to leave that at the top so you don't lose any quality when you're saving your JPEGs. Select OK. And from there, it'll quickly save. You should be almost done. Once this is finished, uh, just save these pictures into your hard drive, wherever it is, in your F drive. You don't want to be uh, doing anything else with these. They're too big and too long for us to do like a thumbnail print like we had done with the other images you want to make sure that these are just saved set aside and we'll be able to use them down the road uh, when we do our big portfolio we'll be laying them out on the page uh, in nice vertical formats so that you can see exactly uh, the size and, and shape of these photos and hopefully get a little bit better look at them uh, as well we're going to do a project with one of your panoramas down the road when we do our printing section that you'll be able to produce a nice long uh, either one foot by two foot panorama or some skinnier thin ones and you can put those up someplace at your house you can take them home and, uh, and have those for you so again uh, this is Donovan Wright at JP hope you enjoyed this tutorial hope it shows you how to use the panorama functions within Photoshop uh, really quick tutorial or reasonably quick I guess it took me 15 minutes so it's not super fast uh, but hopefully it makes sense uh, if you have any questions comments please 
uh, send them our way. We'd love to have you subscribe, like our videos. Uh, it's super good to be able to get this information out to you and, uh, and hope you have a great day.